Hi everyone. Today I am going to know that black holes are so black or not. We will study from the book of Einstein's A Brief History of Time. We will know that black holes are so black or black holes are not so black. Okay. From the book of Einstein. <coughs> oh, sorry. From the book of. Uh, Stephen Hawking before 1970 my research on general relativity had concentrated mainly on the question of whether or not there had been a big bang singularity how we were one evening in november that year shortly after the birth of my daughter lucy i started to think about black holes as i was getting into bed my disability makes this rather a slow process so i had plenty of time at that date there was so precise definition of which points in space time lay inside a black hole and which lay outside i had already discussed with roser penrose the idea of defining a black hole as the set of events from which it was not possible to escape to a large distance which is now the generally accepted definition it means that the boundary of the black hole the event horizon is formed puts in space time of rays of light that just fail to go away from the black hole hovering for you were just on it is a bit like running away from the police and just managing to keep one step ahead but not being able to get clear away suddenly i realized that the paths of this light rays could never approach the one another if they did if they did they must eventually run into one another it would be like meeting someone else running away from the police in the opposite direction you would both be caught or in this case fall into a black hole but if these light rays were sloped up by the black holes then they could not have been on the boundary of the black hole so the pulse of light rays in the event horizon had always to be moving parallel to or away from each other another way of seeing this is that the event horizon the boundary of the black holes is that the event horizon the boundary of black holes is like the edge of a swallow like the edge of a shadow the shadow of impending doom if you look at the shadow cast by a source at a great distance such as the sun you will see that the rays of light in the edge are not approaching each other if the rays of the light that form the event horizon the boundary of the black holes can never approach each other the area of the event horizon might stay at the same or increase with time but it could never decrease because that would mean that at least some of the rays of light in the boundary would have to be approaching each other in fact the area would increase whenever matter or radiation fell into the black hole or if two black holes collided and uh, merged merged together to form a single black hole the area of the event horizon of the final black holes would be greater than or equal to the sum of the area of event horizon of the original black hole this non decreasing property of the event horizons area placed an important 
restrictions on the possible behavior of black holes i was so excited with my discovery that i did not get much sleep that night the next day i rang up roser penrose he agreed with me i think in fact that he had been aware of this property of the area however he had been using a slightly different definition of a black hole he had not realized that the boundaries of the black hole according to the two definitions would be the same and hence so would their areas provided the black holes had settled down to be a state in which it was not changing with time the non decreasing behavior of a black holes area was very very uh, reminiscent uh, re- reminiscent of the behavior of a physical quantity called entropy which measures the degree of disorder of a system it is a matter of the common experience that disorder will tend to increase if things are left to themselves one has only to stop making repair around the house to see that uh, one can create order out of the disorder or example one can paint the house but that requires expenditure of effort or energy and so decreases the amount of ordered energy available a precise statement of this idea is known as the second law of thermodynamics it states that the entropy of an isolated system of always increases and that when two systems are joined together the entropy of the combined system is greater than the sum of the entropies of the individual system for example consider a system of gas molecules in a box the molecules can be throw off as little billiard balls continually colliding with each other and uh, b- uh, and uh, bouncing off the walls of the box the higher the temperature of the gas the faster the molecules move and so the more frequently and harder they collide with the walls of the box and uh, the greater the outward pressure the exert on the walls suppose that initially the molecules are all confined to the Uh, confined to the ift hand side of the box by a partition if the partition is then more removed the molecules will tend to spread out and uh, occupy both halves of the box at some later time they could by chance all be in the right half or back in the left half but it is over over way overwhelmingly more probable that there will be roughly equal numbers in the two halves such a state is less ordered or more disordered than the original state in which all the molecules were in one half one therefore says that the entropy of gas has gone up similarly suppose one start with two boxes one containing oxygen molecules and the other containing nitrogen molecules if one join the boxes together and removes the the intervening wall the oxygen and the nitrogen molecules will start to mix at a later at a later time the most probable state would be a fairly uniform mixture of oxygen and nitrogen molecules throughout the two boxes this this state would be less ordered and hence have more entropy than the initial state of two separate boxes the second law of thermodynamics as a rather different status than that of other laws of the science such as newton's law of gravity for example because uh, it does not hold always just in the vast majority of cases the probability of 
all the gas molecules in our first box being found in one half of the box at a later time is many millions of millions to one but it can happen however if one has a black hole around there seems to be a rather easier way of violating the second law just throw some matter with a lot of entropy such as a box of gas down the black hole the total entropy of matter outside the black hole would go down one could of course one could of course still say that the total entropy including the entropy inside the black hole has not gone down but since there is no way to look inside the black hole we cannot see how much entropy the matter in inside it has i would be nice then if there was so feature of the black hole by which observers outside the black hole could tell its entropy and which would increase whenever matter carrying entropy fell into the black hole following the discovery described above that the area of the event horizon increased whenever matter fell into a black hole research student at uh, princeton named jacob bekenstein suggested that uh, the area of the event horizon was a measure of the entropy of the black hole as matter carrying entropy fell into a black hole the area of its event horizon would go up so that the sum of the entropy of matter outside black holes and area of the horizon would never go down the suggestion seemed to prevent the second law of the thermodynamics from being violated in some situations however there was one fatal law flaw fatal flaw if a black holes has entropy then it ought also to have a temperature must a body with a particular temperature must emit radiation at a certain rate it is a matter of the common experience that if one heats up a poker in a fire it glows red hot and emits radiations but bodies at lower temperature emit radiations too one just does not normally notice it because the amount is fairly small this radiation is required in order to prevent violation of the second law so black holes ought to emit radiations but by their very definitions black holes are objects that are not supposed to emit anything it therefore seemed that the area of the event horizon of a black holes could not be regarded as its entropy in 1972 i wrote a paper with brendan cater and an american colleague jim bardeen in which we joined we pointed out that uh, although there were many similarities between entropy and the area of the event horizon there was this apparently fatal difficulty i must admit that in writing this paper i was motivated partly by irrita uh, irritation with bankstein who i felt had misused my discovery of the increase of the area of the event horizon however it turned out in the in that he was basically correct thought in a manner he had certainly not expected thank you